Hi, Andrea. Hi, how are you? I'm excellent. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm excited I'm to have good. you here. I was just reading, I was checking out your website and reading all, all your bio. I think it's going to be a good episode for our audience. I'm super, super excited. And you're in Boston. I am. I'm not in are? Boston right now. Nope. Oh. I am in Indianapolis. I grew up in Boston. Uh, I, I don't know why. I, saw, I guess I saw something at Boston. I was like, oh, I love that. I don't live there, yes. but my sister does. Where, where do you live? I'm in, whoa, I'm in Toronto, Canada. That's what I thought. I was like, you're in Canada. That's what I thought. Yeah. 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 Is my, is my sound okay? Because I have lots of sound options. <laughs> yeah, it sounds fine. Okay. My headphones are not good today. I don't know what's going on. So I actually don't need this one. So um, I'm, I, even myself sounded kind of funny, but I think we'll be fine. Um, okay. Yeah, you sound fine to me. I was okay. like, I know you're a podcaster too. There's times where I'm like, the sound seems fine. And then the episode gets edited. I'm like, what happened to the sound? I don't know if that happens to you. Yeah, happens I, to know. Me. I know it does. And sometimes I don't even want to listen. Like, I'm like, it's all good. It's all going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't we, have time. we don't need to know. Right. Right. Exactly. So, um, okay. So there's so many, <laughs> like, I, I mean, I sent you some ideas, but there's so many things we could talk about. You tell me, what do you, tell me about your audience a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like there's so many things we can talk about. My audience are interior design, design firm owners. They're early okay. in their entrepreneurial, their entrepreneurial journey, but okay. that doesn't mean that they're young. So a lot of designers yeah. come at this as a second and third career. Right. right. I have a lot of interior design clients, so I totally, I get it. <clears throat> yeah. So, and they're really just hungry for, you know, a lot, just how do they run their business? Like my big thing is let me teach you what I've learned because when I started, I didn't know fuck all. And so it was a real <laughs> stumbling. I was stumbling. Right. And so yeah, yeah. I just love helping designers and sharing knowledge and empowering them. So I feel like I'm excited yep. to talk to you. I feel as though there'll be um, just some motivation, get them out of their heads, get them just I, right now. I will tell you my design community is really feeling the economy. It's just okay. hitting now. People are starting okay. to raise questions, raise their hand and say, um, you know, things are slowing down. And as a result, I just had a um, membership call yesterday with my I have a, uh, membership. They're feeling really lonely. We had an mm. entire hour conversation about when you're a solo entrepreneur and then that's when the self doubt starts to creep in Am mm -hmm. I in the right industry? Am I doing the right thing? Because as soon mm -hmm. as things aren't like full on superpower mode, you start to question your path and your direction in life. Right. Right. Yes. So we can do. talk about that. You totally do. Totally. Um, we can I talk. Okay. So what if I, what if I, um, what if we kind of packaged it? Like I, I've been, you know, I'm, did I, I'm writing a book. You might've caught that on the yes, website. Yeah, that's exciting. Right. In the, yeah. In the books about big thinking and how you big thinking really comes from your future you. So the person mm -hmm. who has, is, is reaching the goals, is succeeding, is feeling the way they want to feel, which mm -hmm. right now is like, seems so hard probably for them because they're yeah. feeling all of this doubt and, and confusion and lonely, like then they, the loneliness sets in. So we could talk about how, um, you know, shifting into that big thinking and how you do that really pulls you out of what I call the messy middle, which is exactly what you just described. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And moves you into, you know, kind of that next phase. I don't know how that yeah. sounds, but that might be a I think great way to. I think that's great. I think I like that because that's something too that I, like, I feel like I can relate, I can resonate with that right now. If I've, I feel like I'm in another new messy middle. So I feel like I can kind of throw yeah. in my two cents of where I'm at in my business and how I feel. Yep. Uh, so let's not, without further ado, I think that's a great place. Do and it. Let's just start. So I love to start off by having you kind of just give your little hello. This is who I am, how I got to where I am now. And then okay. we'll just dive into questions, a super candid conversation, very organic. It's just, I always okay. want to make sure that we're giving people like takeaways, motivation. Um, yeah. And then at the end, I always, I always ask for our guests to share 
a last nugget of wisdom. Okay. It could be something we oh, already mentioned in the podcast, or it could be something completely unrelated. Uh, just sort of okay. something to leave them with. And sure. that's it. Okay. I'm going to okay, do a little I'm ready. I'm in. And we'll start. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I'm Rebecca Hay, and I've built a successful interior design business by trial and error, podcasts, online courses, and so many freaking books. Over the last decade, I've grown from an insecure student to having false starts to careers, and now I'm finally in the place where I want to be. Throughout my journey, it's been pretty obvious that I'm passionate about business and helping other entrepreneurs do the same. Each week, I'll share tangible takeaways from my own experience and the experiences of other badass women to help you build your confidence and change your business. Hello, Andrea. Welcome to Resilient by Design. I'm excited to have you here today. I am thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me, Rebecca. I think it's always such a nice treat to have guests here that are not interior design firm owners because they always lend a different perspective and I'm excited to talk to you because you're a business coach you sound super motivational and I'm just really excited to dive into all the things but before I ask you a million questions uh, why don't you just introduce yourself to my listeners today sure so um yes you I am a business and I like to say a business and life coach because guess what Life and business as entrepreneurs, they're intertwined. We can't separate them out. So everything's fair game in my world. And um, I really specialize in the entrepreneurial mindset and helping you take your thoughts and turn them into actions that are going to lead you into what I call the extraordinary so, and that extraordinary, that whatever that is, changes along the way too. But how do we kind of take all the things in our head and make them happen? Um, and I say there's two ingredients to the secret sauce. M- mindset and systems. And mindset's probably about 80% of it. And systems and processes, that's about 20% of it. So um, I work with all female entrepreneurs really across the world helping them in whatever industry they're in. And I do have a whole bunch of interior designers, but whatever industry they're in, um, move into that space. And kind of just side note, we are almost done building a new house. And so I, for the past uh, two plus years, have been kind of like seeing things from both sides, right? Because I we we are working with an interior designer and um, I don't know how I would have done the whole project without her. And so I get to see, especially, you know, in your industry, I get to see kind of what it's like being the client. And then I'm actually seeing and talking to all my, well, my clients who are interior designers. So I kind of have that little inside edge right now. Oh my God, that must be actually a really interesting place to be and probably actually really helps you to deeper, further, deeper your understanding of interior designers and what they go through. Because now you can be like, well, as a client, uh, I wouldn't do that. Or as a client, like, this is my experience, right? I'm sure it's so interesting to be on both sides. Yes, it is. It is. It's (laughs) fun. And it's, it's great. um, It's a great way to, to figure out what the client, you want your client's experience to be. So we've had, I mean, like, I love writing my check every month to my interior designer. It's like, I'm happy to do it. Um, but why is that? And I think it's because we're having such a great experience. But we can have a whole other podcast about that. But I just yeah, wanted to throw yeah. it in there um, because that's, you know, that's kind of happening in the moment. And I'm releasing a book um, at the end of September, if you're listening, whenever you're listening to this, and it's called She Thinks Big, The Entrepreneurial Woman's Guide to Moving Past the Messy Middle and Into the Extraordinary. And I think as entrepreneurs, we're always in somewhat of a messy middle, no matter what stage we're at. So I'm excited to talk about that. I love that. that. I love the title, She Thinks Big. I mean, I want to dive into that a little bit because it's interesting. So much of my journey has been about thinking big and about, you know, really envisioning a future and having really big, like freaking lofty goals that if I said them out loud, people would laugh at me. And I always felt like, I was destined for something greater, something more. And then what happened was shifted for me. 
And I've, I've talked about this with my, with my students, with my community, this idea of, I always found it really easy to like cast a vision or think big. And then like that messy middle you mentioned, I feel like for me, shifting into podcasting and I'm, I'm running an interior design business, but I'm also running online courses for designers and a community and a podcast. And so I'm kind of in this weird transition where I'm trying to do all the things and mm-hmm. it does feel like a messy middle. And my vision and my, and my ability to think big is in some ways it's been like tampered with. It's such a weird uh-huh. way to describe it, but it's because my identity is shifting I'm like, what is my vision? And I literally have recorded podcast episodes in recent time about this, and I, I'm clearly still not through it. Um, so I'm so curious to dive into this because I know, especially in our community right now, at this time, at the time of this recording in September, is there's a shift happening. The economy is not booming like it was. People are slowing down. People are wondering, is this the right thing for me? I mean, I've had designers say, maybe I should just give up and go back to corporate. So mm-hmm. is that part of the messy middle that you talk about, this kind of like it is lack of clarity. It is. It is um, definitely part of what, the, what I call the messy middle. I think here's what happens. And I've experienced this. Um, like I, I kind of feel right now I'm, I'm in and in a little bit of a messy middle, which is interesting because I decided to write this book more than a year ago. Okay. So I wrote the book. Right? I have a podcast and I, I mean, it's called Time to Level Up. It's, it's like on episode 150 and that kind of clicks along. Okay. So I was like, all right, what's next? Let's write a book. I don't know where I got that great idea, but let's write a book. The book's written. The book's been written for a couple months and now I'm in this launch period. And now what am I going to do with it? What am I going to, how do I want to shape? I wrote it to to help other people. Like, how am I going to get it out there? What's that going to look like? And I've never done this before guess what? I've never done it before. And my identity is shifting into like an author and a coach and a like what, like kind of like you said, what's going on. So I have figured out that really what big thinking is, and that's what I say is what's needed to push you past the messy middle. Big thinking is really accessing your future self. Okay. Big thinking cannot happen unless you access your future self, it comes from your future self. So what does that mean? So like today, okay, I don't know what it is like to have a book on a shelf yet. I can envision it. It's only a month away, but I have to go to that place where the book is on the shelf and um, we, you know, it's, it's done all the things I want it to do. Um, We're living in this beautiful new house. I, feel like I have the freedom in my business, the time, money, energy, freedom I want, right? Even more than I have now. I have to go to that Andrea of the future and say, hey, Andrea, 10 years from now, or maybe one year from now or three years from now, depending on what I'm thinking about. Hey, what would you tell Andrea of today to do? Like, what do you think she should do? Because when I'm sitting here feeling like stewing in the messy middle or feeling um, inadequate, you know, to the present day, Andrea is not really very helpful. She's not helpful. You have to go. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> she's not helpful. And the past, Andrea, is not very helpful either. Okay, because she's never been there. And she also could come up with all these, um, what I like to say, frenemy voice warnings. Okay, so think back to high school. Way back in the day, you know, your frenemy. So it was kind of like your friend, but it was a little bit of an enemy because they always thought that they knew what they were doing and had great advice for you, but you kind of wanted to strangle them a little bit. Well, that little voice in the back of your head that says, um, hey, are you really sure you should go after that client? Is that the kind of person you want to work with? Or, hey, is that proposal, like you really want to put that price tag on that proposal? Or, hey, you really want to launch another course or write a book? Sure about that? That's the frenemy voice. And we have got to quiet it down and say, hey, thanks so much for reminding me that I am not sure about any of this and I haven't done it before. Thank you. I appreciate it. But the Mm -hmm. real Andrea is going to stand up. Like I always say, like there's that song, will the real Slim Shady please stand up? Will the real Andrea please stand up? And the real Andrea is the one in the future. Like that's her. That's the one who's doing that big thinking. And 
the small thinking isn't going to get me anywhere. It's not going to get me out of the messy mm. middle. It's not going to move me forward. So, okay. I want to, I want to pause right there. Cause I just want, I want to unpack that for a second because I think that's yeah. such an important conversation. That voice that's holding us back that comes from inside of us is operating out of fear and out of trying to protect us. Right. But yes. how do you decipher, yes. right? Like, how do you decipher? I'm like, we all can experience this. Literally every single woman, because it's mostly women. There's a few awesome yeah. men who listen to this podcast, but every single woman who is listening to this podcast right now is like, oh, I know that voice. Like, I know that voice. Mm-hmm. I've met her before. How do you decide, though, which voice to listen to? Because one's trying to protect you and slightly holds you back, that frenemy. And the yes. other one is like, but I know, I think I can do this thing and I want to do it. And then we're like caught in this limbo. We are caught in this limbo. We're totally caught in this limbo. So the frenemy voice, that one, I like to say it's another way to think about it is like the inner cave woman. Okay. <laughs> so if we go back, way back, way, way, way back, right? The cave men, cave women, they didn't want to leave the cave because it was scary out there right? There was like the, the bear might eat them or they might not make it to the tree to grab the banana. I don't know, making this up, right? But that's part of human nature. There's something called the motivational triad. And I could get all neurosciencey on this, but there's something called the motivational triad. There's three things that motivate us as humans. Number one, we want to feel safe. Okay. Number two, we want things to be easy and efficient. And number three, we want things to be, um, sorry, safe, easy, and efficient. Those are the, those are the three things, safe, easy, and efficient. We don't like any hard. We don't like uncomfortable, right? We don't, we don't like, um, ambiguity, right? So that's the inner cave woman that's protecting us. But here's the thing, my friends, we are in the 21st century. We are, the cavemen are over. We don't need to listen to that motivational triad. So I think what has to happen is we've got to step outside the cave and we have to ha- figure out how to harness the fear that's coming from the inner cave wind voice. And we've got to flip the script. So there's a bit of this, like, how do you decide what to listen to? If you've even got that inner nudge to, to listen to the, to the voice that's pushing you into the future, you got to go with it. You got to go with it. And, and I've kind of figured out, I think there are four things that you have to understand and do in order to stick with that future you. Because that friend of me is really strong. That inner cave woman is super strong. So we can kind of get into that, what these four things are. Yeah. Okay. I love the idea. I love a good tangible, like, write this down. So guys, if you're listening, yes, you're write probably driving down. or walking, you're probably not just sitting staring at the YouTube screen if you're watching on YouTube or listening. However, make a note, make it, pay attention to the timestamp so you can come back and write this down after. I love it. Okay. Yes, what are the yes. four or things you, that we you can, to uh, okay. Or you can also go download or buy the book too. She thinks big, the book. It's all okay. in there too. She Perfect. thinks big, but here we are ready. Four things. Number one, number one is what I say, consider your thought options. Okay. So like you said, you've got, you're getting pulled in all these different directions by that inner voice, right? All those inner voices, they're all thought options. They're all thoughts. They're all optional. Okay. We don't really usually think about our thoughts as being optional in the moment. Mm. We think of them as being the truth, right? But my uh, picture in my head of thought options is you're at a wedding or you're at some big event and there are past hors d'oeuvres and there is a wait staff person going around and he gives it to the tray or she or she has a tray and says, Hey, Rebecca, we doesn't know your name, but guest, would you please take one, take one. And you look at the tray. And you're like, huh, should I have the bruschetta or the shrimps cocktail or the spinach square? What should I have? So it's like, you've got thoughts on a tray. You get to choose. So if you want to choose the thought that the, Um, this economy is horrible and no one's going to buy anything. Or if you want to choose the thought, this isn't worth putting this proposal out there. Or if you want to choose the thought, maybe I should just throw in the towel and go back to corporate. They're all options. They're all options. 
but equally as available to you are the thoughts or options of, yeah, of course I'm going to put that proposal out there. I mean, there's a 50% chance they'll say yes, 50, 50, right. Or I, I don't want to go back to corporate. I love what I'm doing and I'm in it for the long run. Like I'm in it for as long as it takes. Like those are all options. It's just like a really hot day where I live. It's been super hot these past few days. I could think, oh my gosh, I hate hot days. I'm staying inside in the, in the air conditioning. Or I could say, well, I'm so glad it is not snowing and an ice storm, right? So options. Number one mm-hmm. is consider all of your thought options. I love that visual of the hors d'oeuvre on a tray. First of all, I'm like, take me to that party, Andrea. Where's that party? I want to come and have those options. Um, and uh, it's cold here in Toronto right now, so I cannot relate. Yeah. But I love that idea that, like, you have a choice. I mean, yes. the thing is, we hear, about this, we hear this all the time, like, you can choose your thoughts. Blah, and it's right. like, yeah, that sounds really nice. But it doesn't feel that way, right? No, it's it like doesn't feel that way. And we do. Like, it, cause it sounds so cliche, like, you know, you're in charge of your own thinking. Okay, great. But really, honestly, you have choices, like all the possibilities. A lot of times people say, Andrea, what do you do? Okay. Like, what do you do? And I, I I could answer and I'll give all sorts of answers, but if I'm really feeling a little, you know, I don't know, if I got some gumption, I'll say, I help, right. I help, um, entrepreneurial women figure out all the things that are possible. That's what I do. So let's figure out all the thought options because your thoughts actually then drive how you feel. Right. Mm. And then they drive how, what you'd actually do or act or not act on. So super important. Mm. Number one, consider your thought options. Okay. I love it. Number one, consider your thought options. What's number two? Yep. Okay. Number two, target the real problem. Okay. So target the real problem. So and I'm sure you've experienced this inside your community. Uh, A lot of times when I'm coaching, a client will give me a whole big, long story about all, like, this is what's going on. And they tell me all the details. They usually include some backstory, like to give me some perspective, like they're helping out. (laughs) And I am notorious. (laughs) Wait a minute. The backstory is not helpful? (laughs) Not usually. Not usually. Not really helpful. Mm -mm. It's not helpful in moving forward. Like, it might be something to think about, but it's not helpful in moving forward. Right. So I am pretty notorious for saying, whoa, 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 whoa. like I put up like a big stop. I interrupt them and I say, in one sentence, what's the problem? And sometimes it's dead silence. Because they can't quite figure out what the problem is. So if you'd start thinking like, let's just take the economy, okay? So, all right, so the economy's slowing, you know, especially in interior design and home building, since I know this, since I'm writing a lot of checks. Um, expenses, people are, you know, doubting, should they actually move forward with their renovation or building or whatever? Okay, is that the problem? Or in your in your community is the problem a negative the negative feeling that's coming from all of it like this i don't know if i should move forward in my business or what's wrong with me do i need to change what i'm doing in order to go along with the economy the economy isn't the problem the real problem 99% of the time is that we don't want to feel a negative feeling hmm. that's the problem that's the problem hmm. But then you have to kind of think to yourself, is a negative feeling really the worst thing that we can experience? No. Like if that's it, if it's just feeling kind of uncomfortable or doubt, is that like the end of the world? No. So the real Mm. problem oftentimes is just that you don't want to feel a negative feeling when it comes to business and it comes Mm. to running your own business. So, oh my God. Okay. Hold the front door. Let's all just digest that for a second. Cause I'm like still processing what you just said. We don't want to feel a negative feeling. So would that kind of get tough 
or we have a negative feeling because we've compared ourselves to someone else or a client mm-hmm. says no, or they ghost us, or we see our design colleague get a project that we're like, why don't I get those types of projects? That negative emotion that we're feeling, if I'm understanding correctly, is causing us to doubt ourselves and not move forward into this big picture. Cause it's like, we, we all of a sudden, I'm just maybe thinking about my own life. Let's be honest. That's all I can really relate to. I'm like, okay. So as soon as like the going gets tough or like, I can really relate to this with employees. As soon as I'm like, Oh, I have to write that employee up because they did this terrible thing. And it's no longer just a warning situation. And it's like, I come home at the end of the day and I feel like I'm terrible at managing people. I don't know how to run a business. I need to change industries. Literally, yes. that I'm like, oh, the whole thing is being blown up. My husband's like, you're fucking crazy. You're learning. Yeah. This is part of doing business. And like, eventually you can afford to hire HR to manage all of that. But right now you can't. And so this part of doing business, it doesn't mean you don't know how to run a design, design business. It doesn't mean you can't grow and excel. It doesn't mean you can't grow your coaching business. Is that kind of what you mean? That's exactly what I mean. That's, That's exactly one, what one I example mean. Example from a friend. Oh, from a friend. You are, you're just asking for a friend. You're just asking exactly. for a friend. Like, like if you go to, I loved your example of um, why didn't you get that project that your design colleague got, right? What's up with that? What's all right? So, you know, some, that happens to my clients a lot. And no matter what industry they're in, they didn't they didn't get the business. Someone went. Some made another choice. They didn't go with them. And then all of a sudden, they're like, well, so that means that I need to change everything. I need to change my whole process, my totally. whatever must not be great. They didn't like the colors on my proposal. It has to look better. I have one client right now, actually an interior designer, who's so hung up on the, how her handbook looks for her, for her team. Like, what are you doing? This is like, move on. You know, it doesn't look pretty enough. <laughs> I know. So, that's also, but that's us as creators. I know. We it's, tend to focus creative. on the less important things, but because they're pretty. Right. I know right. it's that's so, an artist. Thing. So, so that's like, the, no, it doesn't mean any of that. Like you don't need to change anything. Really what's going on here is that you don't like the fact how it feels when you don't get the business. That's all. That's all it is. That's all it is. So, so what do we do when we recognize that? Problem. Okay. Okay. Next. I'm going to, I'll let you, make, okay. I'm like jumping the gun here. I'm, I'm like, I'm, can, all we, things. I'm like, make, I'm taking notes right now, by the way. Okay, good. Take notes. This is awesome. So, okay, here's number three. And this is where I come in to play a lot of times when I'm working with my clients, because as an entrepreneur, as humans, okay, there's a lot of ambiguity and uncertainty, right? Uncertainty is real and it's a constant fear. But if you are going to move past the messy middle, if you are going to think big, if you are not going to wallow there, you know, under your covers, you have to, number three is embrace the ambiguity. Okay. So uncertainty and ambiguity are just inherent in entrepreneurship. They never leave. You will always have the unknown and you'll even have unknowns about the unknown. Right. I like to call it like the blank spot of impending catastrophe. It's like always looming out there. You know, it's <laughs> always so out awful. there. Why right? have I done this so, to myself? Yes. So, you know, I'm like, I can go to so many places, you know, what if the book, no one buys it? What if no one cares about what I have to say? What if whatever? Okay. Um, recognizing that you, ha- that there's always going to be ambiguity is essential. Okay. It's really important too to recognize that kind of in a different kind of to shift the gear a little bit, frame it a little differently. Recognize that you'll never have all of the information. Okay, you'll never have all of the information. So a lot of times a client will get on a prospect, uh, uh, we'll have a client consult, like a prospect call at the end of the call. And I'm sure this, this happens in the design world all the time. They're like, yes, yes, I think we're going to move forward with this. This sounds great. I love it but I just want to think about it. I'm just going to think about it and I'm going to get back to you. I'm just going to think about it. So I always pause at that point and I ask for permission to put my coach hat on. Can I put my coach hat on? Is that okay with you? 
they all say yes. Okay. Let me ask you this. What exactly are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? And guess what? No one has a great answer to that. No one has a great answer to that. They're like, well, I mean, I'm thinking, do I want to spend this money? Do I, you know, should I start tomorrow or should we start in three years? I don't know. And I think I'm just going to kind of look and see what else is out there. And maybe there's a better option. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just going to think about it. Okay. Guess what? You could think about it for a hundred years and you are not going to be in any different spot because there's going to be more unknowns. Okay. So you've really got to be okay with not knowing or for feeling over the uncertainty and ambiguity of all these situations. Like there was a reason someone set up a call with you, right? There's a reason they wanted you to come over and look at their space. Like they want, they want to do something different with it. There's a reason that someone reached out to me and said, Hey, Andrea, I think I might need some coaching. There's something going on. Okay. So you know that you want to change something. You wouldn't have started this whole process if you didn't. So what exactly are you thinking about? So Mm -hmm. anyway, number three, embrace ambiguity. Yeah, that's a hard one, I think. But I think that's also just part of being an entrepreneur, right? It is. Like, it is. I talk to my friends who work in corporate and who say, like, I could never run my own business because there is so much ambiguity. Also, there can be inconsistent cash flow. You don't know where your next project's coming from. You have to sort of be okay with, and I say to designers all the time because it slows down. Every summer it slows down. I've learned now in my decade plus time in the industry that summer is quiet for new leads. Everyone's on vacation. Yep. Think about it. It's logical. And yet we all still panic because we don't know yep. where the next project's coming from, but it always comes. And so it's part and parcel of just, you're right, being comfortable with that, the unknown. Into the unknown. Yep. Into the unknown, yeah. right? Into it's the unknown. Yes. The unknown and I, beyond. You can the tell I beyond. have a daughter who likes Frozen. I know all the songs. <laughs> But really, like some of these kids' Disney movies, they teach some good lessons, right? They like do. there she is. They do. There is what's her name, Elsa, going off into the unknown, right? Yep. Doesn't know what's gonna come of it. Trusting that it's gonna work out, whatever it is. She's gonna yeah. meet whoever she meets and she's it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good story. Free the world. Anyway. Yes. Okay, so we've got yes. one is All right. consider your thought options. Sorry, is that really? Yeah. yeah. Two is yep. target Number the one real was- problem, which is the negative feeling usually um yep. and then in three is embrace the ambiguity so then what happens next what's number four so number four is seek support okay so as entrepreneurs especially we are constantly battling against the fear of failure right or we're staying in the space of the small thinking and ironically even if we can get out of it even when we do get out of it, because we do, there's a, I call it like the entrepreneurial spiral, right? So you're, you kind of, you've got a pro- beginning of your business, we'll call it, we'll call it phase one. You know, you're like, I'm going to start this business. And you believe that you're going to be successful. And you decide that, yes, you're moving forward. You make your plan. You take some action. You're a year in. You're like, huh, this, I'm still here. This is okay. Right? So then you start the next spiral. All right. What, what's my next move? And the next spiral happens. And inside each of those little spirals, there is a messy middle. Now, the messy middle gets smaller relative to the spiral as as we kind of progress. But there's always a messy middle. And there's always a little fear involved. And there's always uncertainty. So we need to seek support. And I want you to, like, this is my analogy of the support thing. You can tell I'm big on, like, pictures. Visual. This is as creative as I get. So, okay, think back like your daughter's age. I don't know how old she is, but if she's watching Frozen, I can imagine. She's six. Okay, perfect. So she's in her bed, right? She's under her covers. She's got some blanket and a snuggly teddy bear and she's in there and it's really comfortable in there. And some mornings I'm guessing she doesn't necessarily want to get out of there or, you know, it's kind of a slow, like, let's go, let's get going. So as entrepreneurs, We are jolted out of bed, so to speak, often. Like it's almost like someone rips the covers off, rips the comfort off, 
and we are standing at the side of our bed with no stuffed animal, right? Mm. So where are we going to get that comfort? Where are we going to get it? Because we all want it. And remember, it's part of our motivational triad. Like we want we want things to be comfy. So it's really in the form of other humans, okay? So when yes. I say seek support, I mean seek support in the form of other humans, whether that's a mentor or a coach or a community, they're the ones that are going to take the place of the teddy bear, right? They're yes. the ones that are going to provide the comfort. They're the ones that are going to, it's lonely when you're beside your bed by yourself, right? Yeah. With no slippers on, no fuzzy socks. Okay. And so, it's cold. If you live in Canada, it's, cold. it's cold in the cold. morning. Yeah. So you need, I mean, sometimes I think like how, how, how could you survive without the support? Mm. You know, I love when a lot of times people say, well, I'm just going to try this on my own for a little bit. We're going to see how it goes. I mean, yeah. it never goes the way you want it to go. It, you've got to have some sort of support. And okay, caveat, like side note. And actually in my book, I have this sort of like side note on this and I want to bring it out here too. Our family, everybody will tell me, like I would say not everybody, but 97% of my clients, they're, they'll tell you your, their family's really supportive. Their family's really mm. supportive. But that, my friends, is a totally different kind of support because they yeah. want you to be comfy in your bed, all snuggled up. They don't want to mm -hmm. hear about the growing pains and they don't 99% of the time we're not living in a household with another entrepreneur or anything like it. Like they're just doing their thing and they don't necessarily quote unquote get it. Right. Mm -hmm. That I'm so glad they're supportive. They're playing their role. They're doing their group. That's their role to be family support, but you need outside external support because you're yeah. stuck in your own little peanut butter jar. And you, when you're in that peanut butter jar, you can't read the label. You can't even climb out of the jar. It's really hard. You've got to have other oh, humans supporting you. Okay. Hold yes. on. I got to stop you right there because you're, you're, you're preaching to the choir because my whole thing is about finding community, collaboration, not competition. Um, but I love that that is like a core principle for you because there's so much power in having a designer bestie a mentor, a coach. I mean, I have invested in my own co courses and coaches and communities myself over the years. And, and it's so fascinating that we're talking about this right now, because literally the other day I had a call inside my designer's room membership. That's sort of our annual membership for the, the, the students who've gone through my course through power of process. Um, and we meet twice a month. And in the one zoom call, what came up was this feeling of loneliness, this feeling mm -hmm. of, I feel alone. Things are slowing down a little bit and don't like, and it was like one person put it in the chat and then everybody was like, yes, me too. Oh my God, that's me. I've got you. So I was like, let's talk about this. And we had a conversation about how lonely it can be as an entrepreneur, especially as a design firm owner, when you don't have a one person or a group or a mentor or anybody to sort of vent to bounce ideas off of and I shared the example of my husband is also actually an entrepreneur and you know my listeners know that and yet I still struggle because trying to get I'm like this happened today with this and like I don't I'm trying to like I've got all these thoughts in my head and I just want to bounce them off of someone and he's just not the right person to bounce the ideas off at the end no. of the day he's <laughs> tired he's had his own full day right and he's just though he does in theory have a vested interest in my success He's just not that, that person. And so right. I, right. I, you know, I share that I have like a WhatsApp group of four interior design colleagues of mine here in Toronto. And so when I have design stuff, I'm like immediately messaging like, oh my gosh, do you guys think this proposal is too high? Here's what my client said. And we're doing that all the time. And so we're getting that like, okay, yeah, I'm not crazy. I have support. And I was sharing in the group that now doing this podcasting thing and doing these online courses, I'm in this uncharted territory where I don't have my group. I'm still trying to find my support system. And part of that, I think, Andrea, is what's causing me to feel like that messy middle. Like, I don't have yes. that before. Yes. You know, it's, it's, it's really um, interesting 
too, that sometimes people will know that maybe support is out there, but they're too embarrassed to ask about it too, right? Or for it. They, they're not putting themselves in that vulnerable position. So I actually challenged my clients this week to ask, to ask people, ask 20 people to help you with something. And that could look like, hey, what do you think of this proposal? Right? Give me some feedback. It could also look like, hey, I know you usually don't do haircuts on Mondays, but would you mind coming in for me? Because I've been seeing you for 20 years, right? What are you asking for? Or it could be, um, will you please stop on the way home and pick up dinner because I don't feel like cooking, right? It could be all of these things. It could, but, oh, but, but Andrea, women don't like, I'm totally downrising right now, so shoot me, but I'm going to say the women I know, we don't like to ask for help. How no, do we don't. Do that's it? why I do challenge any of your them. That's... Do that? I'm like, oh, that no. Is so that's why I wouldn't no, ask that. We were having this conversation, like kind of coming at it from a different angle, but same, you know, same sort of thing. So that's why I said, all right, this week, here's your challenge. 20 things. Start writing them down. I want to know about them. You've got to ask for 20 things. You've got to ask for help or support around 20 situations, ideas, whatever it is. And that's something that like, Someone else, it's, it's, you've got to have someone else challenge you to do that because you're probably not going to do it yourself, right? So someone challenged me to do this last week. So now I'm challenging my clients to do it this week. But yeah, so that fourth thing, if you really want to move from the messy middle, wherever you are, or from kind of recognizing that you're doing some small thinking or from the place where you're listening to that frenemy voice, all too often and you want to shift and and start to get some traction you've got to go to that future you you've got to consider all your thought options you have to decide huh you know what this this problem really isn't a problem it's just a feeling okay you've got to understand that you're never going to know everything there's a lot of ambiguity and you have to seek support like those are four things that big thinkers do to harness the fear because the fear is never going away to harness it and to flip the script and Mm. if you start to understand what this sort of spiral looks like and you you you've got um some momentum and you've got your support team things get a whole lot easier things get a whole lot easier and that's really what i love that's kind of why i wrote this book And, and because I divided it into three sections. There's big mindset, there's the big plan, and then there's the big results, meaning, okay, now what's the next spiral I'm going to be in, going into? What's that? And trying to help you, help guide you through that. So if that sounds like something you're interested in. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. Okay. So when is the book coming out? The book is coming out on September 26th, 2023. And you can go to she thinks big the book.com. And if it's before September 26th, if you're listening before then, you can go and download the first chapter in the intro and get on the list to then get like a discounted um, code, a discount code for actual launch day. You can figure it, find out how you can um, attend some of my Think Big Insider sessions at no cost. You can take a quiz. There's lots of great, amazing things there at SheThinksBigTheBook.com. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love it. Well, um, I'm excited to get my hands on a book. And um, I think this has been a really great conversation. I'm so excited for our designers who are feeling like they're in the messy middle to just kind of maybe pause and reflect. And it doesn't mean it's time to throw in the towel. I mean, maybe you do want to move on and that's a whole well that's a thought option right like you could too, you right? could that's an option yeah. right there's totally nothing wrong with that like but you have to yeah. decide I mean, we could have a we could have another podcast rebecca on making good decisions yeah. or making just decisions yeah. there's no such thing well, as how a good about decision. just making but, a decision yeah that's what i said making a decision <laughs> just making decisions no good no bad just making decisions but yeah yes yeah. amazing yeah. okay well this is sounds like you have tons of wisdom to share before we sign off I always ask guests to share a last nugget of wisdom. What is your okay. nugget today? Okay, ready? So being an entrepreneur is really a journey in personal development disguised as an entrepreneurial adventure. So 
it's all supposed to be very adventurous, right? And fun and amazing and great. But really what it is, is you it, growing yourself. Like it's a journey in personal development. Sometimes being an entrepreneur has nothing to do with business. It just has, it's a journey in you figuring out how to manage your mind. And if you can manage your mind, wow. I think you're going to be like, okay. That's massive wisdom. I have to say, because I always say like your, your personal uh, evolution is going to fizz, sorry, is going to fuel the business. Fuel. Right? Revolution. Yeah. But yeah. It's so true. It's like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur slash I'm going to figure out my shit because I, yes. right? You got to get your shit together. You You've got to. to get your shit together. Yeah. So that's like, again, when I coach, um, you know, it's business and life. They are both for fair game and they all are very much intertwined like a big ball of yarn. And that's just the way it goes. Yeah. So, And some of the best business coaching that I've had in my life has been really, we don't talk about business much at all. And I leave and I'm like, huh, but we, how did we end up talking about my childhood and my need for A, B, C, D, E? But then the next time a situation comes, I reflect, I'm like, oh, this is why I'm feeling this way or I want to do this thing. Like, it is so intertwined. You're so right. You sound yep. like a really smart cookie. I'm so glad we got to have this conversation today. Um, can you just remind everyone where they can follow you and find out more about all the things, Andrea? Yes. So easiest way to do that is to go to Andrea's with an S links with an S Andrea's with an S links with an S dot com. And you're going to have links there to take a quiz. You're going to have a link to the book. You're going to have a link to my podcast. My podcast is called time to level up. So you could go find that right now on your, whatever your favorite podcast player is and direct message me on Instagram or message me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm always up for a chat. Um, and we can, I can, hopefully I can help you. I love it. All right. Thank you so much, Andrea. And, uh, we'll definitely have you back on the decision topic. That's a good one. All right. Super. Thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> Take care. Okay. Wasn't Andrea such a great guest? I really love it when a guest comes on and goes deep, but in a really tangible way. Like I love that she walked us through those four ways that you can move past the messy middle. And Honestly, my biggest takeaway from all of those steps was targeting the real problem. Like, I never thought about that. I mean, I guess I thought about it, but the idea that what is the real problem here? The real problem here is that I'm just uncomfortable with being uncomfortable or I feel um, disappointed or I feel a negative emotion, fill in the blank. And that doesn't mean it's time to throw it all away and shift gears and rejig your entire process or change industries or whatever. And I think it was just such a great reminder that we just have to remember there are going to be times in our business where we feel uncomfortable. And that is totally, totally normal. Um, I think her book's going to be awesome, guys. Go check out her book, She Thinks Big, and find and follow all things Andrea. I think what she's doing is pretty interesting. I think anyone who listened today could agree. Uh, I'm always happy to promote and share women who are supporting other female entrepreneurs, especially when they're helping to find success and and time and money and more energy in their lives like Andrea is. So go on, follow all things Andrea. Let me know if you enjoyed this episode. And of course... If you found this episode helpful, then leave us a review on iTunes. It would mean the world to me to see some fresh new reviews of the podcast so that we can be searchable for other designers like you. Okay, see you soon.